Hey, it's Ashley from Smart Edition Academy, and in today's video, we're going over some AccuPlacer arithmetic practice questions. So this is part of the math exam for the AccuPlacer test. So if you are taking that and you want to practice some questions very similar to what you will see on the test, this is the video for you. So before we jump into it, Take a look at the link in the description of this video. We have lots of other practice questions for you, lots of awesome videos to help you study. We have our full online AccuPlacer course as well as a free practice test. Okay, so if you are preparing for the AccuPlacer, we have got you covered at Smart Edition Academy. So let's jump into some practice questions to help you prepare. On the arithmetic section, we are gonna have these type of topics. Okay, this is not all of the topics you may see, but this is a pretty good idea of what you can expect. So whole number operations, fraction operations, decimal operations, percentages, and we also need to be able to compare numbers and find their equivalents. So I'm going to show you some examples of each of these topics. Whole number operations. So here's a few examples of what you might see. 346 plus 1,219. So here's a little review about the algorithm we use when we are adding large numbers. So we need to make sure place value is lined up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the larger number on top and then place this smaller number below so that it lines up. So 1,219, the 300 is going to have to go under the 2, right? Those are both in the hundreds place and then it's lined up perfectly. And when I go to add, 9 plus 6 is 15. I have to carry my 1. 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 4 gives me 6. 2 plus 3 is 5. And then the 1 comes down, so we get 1,565. So if you have the calculator, I would not recommend doing this by hand. Just plug it in your calculator. But if they want to assess your ability to use this algorithm, you may not be allowed to use your calculator for a question like this. So what about some subtraction? 2,000 minus 199. So I'll do it the traditional way real quick, and then I'll show you a little trick. So 2,000 minus 199. So again, we're going to line up our place values appropriately. And now if I go to subtract 0 minus 9, we can't do that, right? So we have to go over and borrow. So I'm going to have to go all the way over to the thousands place, turn this into a 1, and the next place value over in the hundreds, that 0 becomes a 10. I still need to keep carrying and borrowing and moving things over. So that became a nine. My tens place becomes a 10 and now that becomes a nine. And my ones finally becomes a 10 and now I can subtract 10 minus nine, one, nine minus nine, zero, nine minus one, eight, and then one minus nothing is just one. So 1,801, let me show you an easier way to do this. So if we have 2,000 minus 199, it's really kind of complicated because we have to do all of that borrowing. So let's actually, do 1,999, which is one less than 2,000. And instead of subtracting 199, we'll subtract 198 because that is one less. So this is a cool trick that can help you if you need to do these things by hand. Now I don't have to borrow at all. Nine minus eight is one, nine minus nine is zero, nine minus one is eight, and the one comes down, we get the same answer either way. So hopefully that trick helps you, okay? Just go one less than the top number, one less than the bottom number, and you are gonna get the same answer. Okay, and let's just look at a quick word problem. So a group has 32 members. If each member brings in 13 cans for a food drive, how many total cans will the group have collected? Well, if we have 32 members and each member brings in 13 cans, we're going to have to multiply these. So again, if you have a calculator, just go ahead and plug that in, okay? The key part here is knowing that we need to do multiplication, but just for these purposes, I will do this by hand so you see the long way to do it. We're gonna start in the ones place, two times three is six and then move over to this three, three times three is nine. Then done with the three, move over to the one in the tens place, so I need a placeholder. One times two is two, one times three is three, and now I can add these together. Six, 11, carry the one, and we get 416 total. Okay, so there's a few examples of what you might see in the whole numbers topic. Here's some fractional operations. So two thirds plus three fifths. In order to add fractions or to subtract fractions, okay, add or subtract, we need a common denominator. So three and five, we're gonna look for a multiple, which if we do three times five, we get 15. So I'm gonna just create equivalent fractions, both of these over 15. So three times five got me to 15. So I'll do two times five to get 10. 
5 times 3 gives me 15, and 3 times 3 will give me 9. So then I just can add these together, and I get 19 over 15. Oftentimes, now we're going to have to actually turn that into a mixed number. So 15 goes into 19 one time with 4 left over. So my final answer would be 1 and 4 fifteenths. Okay, so addition or subtraction, find a common denominator, and then we can just add the numerators or subtract the numerators appropriately. Now, if we're looking for division, okay, I'll show you the trick I use for division, and then I'll also talk you through multiplication because it's actually included in here. So 4 fifths divided by 8 fifteenths. What I use is KCF, so sounds a lot like a fried chicken franchise you might have heard of. Um, this helps you remember to keep, change, flip. So what that means is keep the first fraction, change division and multiplication, and flip the second fraction to be 15 over 8. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I could multiply across the top and across the bottom. That's typically what we do for multiplication. Just multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and simplify. What I can also do is I can simplify first. So what I do is called cross canceling. I'm going to cross cancel. And I'm looking for something on the top that shares a factor with something on the bottom. So for example, 4 and 8 share a factor of 4. So I'm going to divide each of these by 4. 5 and 15 share a factor of 5. I'll divide each of these by 5. And now all I have to do is multiply across the top and across the bottom. And I've already simplified. And the only thing I have to do is turn it into a mixed number. So 2 goes into 3 once with 1 left over. So our final answer would be 1 and 1 half. Okay, so there's some fractional operations for you. Also, we're going to need to know how to work with decimals. So here's a few examples. 5 and 2 hundredths plus 2 and 6 thousandths plus 4 tenths. So the important thing about adding or subtracting decimals is you have to line up the decimal place. So if I put 5 and 2 hundredths on the top, when I do 2 and 6 thousandths, I need to make sure my decimals are lined up. Okay, that tells me that my place values are lined up the right way. And then 4 tenths will just go like this. So all my decimals are lined up and now I can add. Some of us might want to add placeholders in these empty gaps, for example, here and here and here. Okay, just knowing that those are just zero. Those trailing zeros are not necessary, but they help us add and not forget any spots. So zero plus six plus zero, two plus zero plus zero, zero plus zero plus four. Make sure we move our decimal place right down underneath and then five plus two is seven. Okay, so that would be our final answer. Now let's look at a word problem. A can of beans costs $1.28 each. How much would nine cans cost? So again, knowing what operation this is, this would actually be multiplication again. So we're going to take $1.28 and multiply it by nine. So notice how this is different than addition, right? I did not have to line up my decimal points here because when I multiply, the place value is not necessary to line up, and I'll show you why. So 8 times 9 is 72. Carry the 7. 2 times 9 is 18 plus 7. Give me 25. 1 times 9 is 9 plus 2 is 11. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see how many digits are to the right of any decimal that I see. This is the only decimal, so I'm going to swoop it twice, right? So that means I have to move this decimal over twice here. So there should be two numbers on the right side of the decimal again. So my final answer would be $11.52. Another trick that can be really helpful if you sometimes get confused about where the decimal should go is to just estimate a little bit. So if I say 128 is approximately 1 and 9 is approximately 10, 1 times 10 would be $10. So my answer needs to be somewhere around $10. So depending on where I put my decimal place, we'll change this number. The only place that it makes sense is to put it right here, and I get $11.52. Okay, so hope that helps with your decimal operation. So let's look at some percent questions. So percent literally means out of 100. So we will probably use that to help us. Um, so let's see what we can do. What is 20% of 255? So one thing that we can do with percents is to find easier percents like 10, 
20 is a good one to know, okay? So for example, if I had 10% of 255, I just have to divide this by 10, and I get 25.5. Now to find 20%, that would be double that, so that would be 51. The other thing you can do is turn your 20% into a decimal. So 20% is equal to 0 0.20, or 20 hundredths, right out of 100. So we just multiply that, by the 255 and we will also get 51. Okay, 72 is what percent of 60? So if I take 72 and I wanna know what percent of 60 it is, I have to do 72 over 60. And a question like this, you are very likely to be able to use a calculator. So if I use a calculator, let me just, <laughs> Sorry, let me just grab that calculator. And I just do 72 divided by 60. So why don't you try that while I'm doing it, if you have a calculator handy or even your phone. 72 divided by 60 gives me 1.2. 1 1.2. And when I turn that into a percent, now I'm going to multiply this by 100 or swoop the decimal to the right twice. Okay, so now I'm going from a decimal to a percent. I go to the right, and this would be 120%. So it's a good reminder to know that percents can be between zero and 100, which we typically see, but they can also be above 100. If something is greater, like for example, 72 is greater than 60, the percent is going to be over 100. Okay, and here is a word problem. On a test, Ashley got 60 out of 82 questions correct. To the nearest percent, what score does she receive on the test? So 60 out of 82 is our ratio. We write that as a fraction to turn it into a percent. We're just going to divide 60 divided by 82. And when I do that, I get 0 0.7317, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So if I turn my decimal into a percent, also you can think about this as multiplying by 100. Remember, percent is out of 100. So this gives me about 73.17%, but I need it to the nearest percent. So that would be 73%. Our last topic in the arithmetic section is number comparisons and equivalents. So what that means is we're gonna need to take numbers that maybe are in decimal form or percent or fraction and compare them and figure out what's greater than, what's less than, are they equal? So in this example, we need to take 75 thousandths 0.75% and 3 fourths and figure out the which of the following correctly orders the values from least to greatest. So for me, I prefer to turn everything into a decimal and then compare it. So the first one, we don't have to do anything to. 0.75%, I have to swoop the decimal to the left twice to get rid of that percent sign. That's the same thing as dividing by 100. So this would be 0 0.0075. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a zero in front as well. So we don't get confused about um, how many zeros they are just because of the way the first one was lined up. And then 3 fourths to turn that into a decimal, we can just do 3 divided by 4. So the fraction bar always means division. So 3 divided by 4 gives me 0 0.75. So now if we need to go from least to greatest, well, the smallest one for sure is this one in the middle. So that was 0.75%. So that should be the first one I see. And then next is 75 thousandths and then 3 fourths. So it looks like option A orders these correctly. All right, so another thing with comparisons is that you need to know inequality signs. So we have greater than, less than, and equal to. So this is what always helps me with greater than, less than, or equal to is thinking about these as little alligators. So I don't even know how old I was when I first saw this, but it has stuck with me forever. And if you think about an alligator, it wants to eat more, it wants to eat the thing that's bigger. So that's how we'll try to remember our greater than, less than signs. So which of the following inequalities is true? So if we have fractions that we need to compare, it's a lot easier if we have the com a common denominator. So I'm gonna just rewrite these, each of these sets of fractions with a common denominator and figure out which of these is greater that way. So easy way to do is just multiply the denominator. So four times seven is 28. So three fourths would be the same thing as three times seven is 21 28ths. Five sevenths would be the same thing as seven times four, so five times four is 20 
28th. So is 21 28th less than 21? Sorry, <laughs> is 21 28th less than 20 28th? Definitely not, right? Because 21 is bigger than 20. So we can do the same thing for each of these. So it looks like for B, the least common denominator we could use would actually be six. So that makes our lives a little easier because five, six can stay the same. Three times two is six, so two times two is four. So is four, six greater than five, six? Nope, definitely not. Five eighths is greater than six tenths. So what can we use here? Uh, how about 40? Okay, so I'm looking for the least common denominator, but you could use any common multiple. It's totally fine. So eight times five is 40. So five times five is 25. 10 times four is 40, six times four is 24. So it's 25 fortieths greater than 24 fortieths. That one looks good, okay? So this is a great way to try to compare is to find a common denominator. Some people also like to use a trick where you cross multiply. Um, for me, that always felt a little bit confusing, but if that's something, if that's triggering something for you and you're like, oh, I do remember that, I might wanna use that. Great strategy if it works for you, okay? so. We have made it to the end of our topics for the arithmetic section. So I hope you found these practice questions helpful. Please let us know in the comments if you found this useful and what other types of videos you need help with studying for your AccuPlacer exam. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. <laughs>